So the more you dig into some of Fallout 76's most iconic locations, the more that you find out that these locations don't only look like the real-life locations that they are based on, but the in-game story of these places mirror real-life history and the events that occurred there. In my last video about the Green Bank's telescope array and its in-game counterpart, the National Radio Astronomy Telescope, we discovered an interesting lore connection between the real-life people afflicted with electromagnetic hypersensitivity that congregate around the Green Bank's telescope, and a strong electromagnetic field created by the telescope that caused havoc in the local population in the in-game lore. Today, I have found another connection, this time between the Rockhound sitting on top of Mount Blair and the Battle of Mount Blair, which took place over five days from late August to early September 1921. In the few years leading up to this battle, coal miners led by Frank Keeney, he was a union organizer during the West Virginian Coal Wars, were striking and fighting with mine guards and private police forces employed by the coal companies. Keeney was trying to bring better wages and working conditions for the coal miners. They were asking for an eight-hour workday, um, you know, to work five days a week, eight hours a day, to be paid by the hour uh, instead of the ton, so that they could be, so that they could have a stable income and not work, you know, 14 hours. They weren't asking for the sun and the moon. They were just asking for human decency, basically. The violence continued to escalate up to the events of the Battle of Mount Blair. Some 10,000 armed coal miners confronted 3,000 lawmen and strikebreakers, who were backed by the coal mine operators, during the miners' attempt to unionize the southwestern West Virginian coal fields. When tensions rose between the workers and the mine management, a battle broke out, and it only ended after an approximately one million rounds were fired, and the United States Army had to intervene under presidential order, which was represented by the West Virginian National Guard. And then what actually brought the whole thing to an end was that federal troops from Kentucky were called in. Well, as soon as the miners heard that the federal troops were coming, they thought, first of all, that the federal troops would be on their side, and they'd try to, to work on the side of justice rather than on the side of the coal operators. Indeed, they didn't. They went in and started arresting people, so the miners then fled. They really didn't want to fight the U.S. Army. The calling in of the National Guard and the Army is very important to the in-game lore, so make sure to keep that in mind as we move forward. The story of Mount Blair and the Rockhound starts in Welsh. Welsh is a fairly standard town, other than the fact that it has been utterly destroyed by earthquakes, cracks in the ground, and a garrison of mole miners. The destruction of this town set off the events that follow. Heading north on the crumbling Highway 83, from Welsh towards the Mount Blair train yard, we encounter a flatbed hauling mine equipment. Jumping around the trailer, we can find a picket sign that simply says, Jobs. Around the corner we can see a skeleton and a makeshift wall that also has protest and riot slogans on it. It looks like these protesters were heading up the road towards the train yard. As we approach another piece of heavy equipment with slogans on it, we start the event BattleBot, where we are instructed to kill a Hornwright security bot. Unauthorized presence detected near Mount Blair train yard. Rioting will not be tolerated. Hornwright Mining Company Protection Protocols have been engaged. Security units on site. After destroying it, we can unlock a bunker where two army Mr. Gutsy robots hide inside. You have to wonder, what are these army robots doing here on the top of the mountain? After completing the event and moving into the Mount Blair train yard, we can find a number of specially designed Robco Strikebreaker robots. Everything from Protectrons to Assaultrons. They must have been here for the rioters from Welsh. If we head to the Hornwright headquarters in Charleston, we can find out exactly what was happening here. Inside the Hornwright headquarters, we can go to the fourth floor, where we can enter Penelope Hornwright's office and jump on her terminal. Archived Messages Archived Message 10 2077 Gregory, come by my office as soon as you get in. It sounds like the shaking last night. It revealed some kind of vein down in Welsh. We need to see if we can get our hands on the mineral rights before anyone else does. Penny. 
Archived message 10 2077 I'm sorry, Dad. Gregory and I tried to get down to Welsh as fast as we could, but AMS was already on site by the time we got there. Sounds like it's residual from their old blast tests in the area, peeking up underneath people's homes. Knowing how AMS works, I'm sure they'll make a mess of recovery. So, if you manage to pull yourself away from your projects long enough to read this, at least know that we tried. Penny. If you saw my video on AMS, you would know that AMS was testing subterranean nuclear bombs and caused these fissures in Welsh. Go check out that video for the whole story. I'll have a link in the description and in the cards above. 10 2077 Dad, if you're reading these at all anymore, I really need your help right now. I don't know what the hell AMS did in Welsh over this new claim, but they fucked up bad. The town is in open revolt, and from what I'm hearing, it's turning into a full-on riot. They're trashing anything with a mining company name on it. The governor's already started mobilizing the National Guard, and I've put out to get some independent contractors over to Mount Blair and a couple of your experimentation sites. I know you're still hurting over mom, but I think everyone would really appreciate hearing from you, so please help me out here. 10 4 Gregory. I spoke to the various site managers last night. We haven't been able to regain access to the Rockhound yet, but they've left all of the others. I'm assuming she's talking about dig sites. Initial estimates for the damage are in the tens of millions, and there's still some rioters preventing us from being able to get back onto the digger. I need all of the execs in a conference room today. If we get stuck with this bill, that's it. Show's over. The riots are on AMS. We just need to make sure a judge agrees. Penny. So it sounds like the rioters have taken control of the Rockhound and Mount Blair. 10-12-2077. Gregory. National Guard finally cleared out the last of the rebels off the Rockhound. The damage was so much less bad than we expected, in no small part because it seems those idiots couldn't sort out how the ignition reactors worked, the little blessings of proprietary technology. I want crews working in 24-hour shifts until the site's fully operational again. Every day it's down, we're hemorrhaging money. Penny. So we can assume from this terminal that the Rockhound was a symbol of the relentless automation of the region, taking jobs away from its citizens, and when the earth split underneath Welsh, it was the last straw for the citizens, and they rioted and headed right for the Rockhound. They took it over and controlled it for about eight days, all the while striking and demanding the right to work, until the National Guard sent in specially designed fleets of combat robots to fight off the rioters. The riots came to an end and the Rockhound was returned to Hornwright's possession, just like how the National Guard and the Army were sent in to break up the riots caused by Union organizers over 150 years prior, during the Battle of Mount Blair. For the rest of the story of the Rockhound, we can approach its base where we see massive tracks that give this machine a massive footprint. As we head up a set of metal stairs, we run into some mole miners. When inside, we can see a rather large interior. Looks like there was enough room in here for a handful of people. There is even a full kitchen and some small rooms. The people working on this rig must have also been living here. If we head up to the command room, we can find a holotape labeled Buck Nixon's Rockhound Holotape, where we can hear from one of these workers. Oh boy, <laughs> Well, I'm damn glad that headquarters upgraded the Rockhound's power system. Now that we have reactors installed, we can finally stop depending on the local power grid and diesel engines to keep this baby humming. I can't even count the number of times the machines stall because of blackouts or the engines quit. Of course, working right next to four nuclear reactors isn't as cozy as it sounds. The engineers say those things are perfectly safe, but they aren't the ones that'll be vaporized after a meltdown. <laughs> Still, those uh, fat bonuses I've been getting on my paycheck are hard to ignore, so looks like I'll be staying for a while. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's almost time for me to change out the ignition cores. I'll record more later if I have the time. We heard about these ignition cores on Penelope Hornwright's terminal earlier. 
To learn more, we can head to the upper decks where we can find a workstation. Activating this workstation prompts us to go to a terminal to find out more about the Rockhound. But before we do that, we need to defend the station. After the defense, we can head to the terminal where we can learn more about how the Rockhound works. Reactor Technology your Rockhound Excavator is powered by four ignition reactors that utilize proprietary technology. Developed by a research team at Hornwright Industrial, these reactors use an ignition core refueling system that should ensure an endless supply of energy to keep your operation in business for years to come. Ignition cores can be purchased from our parts department or can be instructed using the included blueprints that have been uploaded to your data device. While we are on here, we might as well read the rest of these entries. Standard Bulletin, ST1744PRD. Congratulations on your purchase of the Rockhound Industrial EXC97 Rockhound Bucket Wheel Excavator Unit. On behalf of everyone here at Hornwright, we'd like to welcome you to the tantalizingly lucrative world of strip mining. Your Rockhound is rated to move over 11,000 cubic meters of earth per hour and can operate with a crew of only 12. Each of the buckets on the massive cutting wheel are cast from a solid block of titanium, ensuring every cut will remain accurate and deep. If you have any questions, feel free to call our Rockhound technology team 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Happy hunting. I wonder who bought this massive machine. Technical Bulletin HI09 21 PIC. Reports are surfacing that properly calibrated ignition cores are draining in three minutes. As a result, the reactors need to be adjusted from 2200 megawatts to 1750 megawatts. This will allow ignition cores to remain in operation for a longer amount of time before replacement is required. We're working hard to increase efficiency, so please stay tuned. So it sounds like they may be having a problem with this proprietary technology that they're using to power this thing. Technical Bulletin HIO9 33 MDC. We've had an emergency shutdown today on the Rockhound due to hydraulic fluid loss in the main drive shaft. We've traced the leak to some faulty seals on the main fluid reservoir. A standard safety check could have detected this issue before it became critical. There was over 6,000 gallons of fluid soaking into the ground which nobody on Mount Blair seemed to notice. This is unacceptable. Seal replacement and tank refill should take approximately two days to fix. We'll be deducting downtime losses from your paychecks. That sounds like a massive environmental hazard, 6,000 gallons of oil spilling into the ground. That's definitely not good. Technical Bulletin HIO9 76 PPI. Due to increasing demand from headquarters, we're adding a third shift, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Full 24-hour operation from the Rockhound requires that the wheel buckets get changed every three days. Please adjust your schedules accordingly. Failure to comply will result in immediate termination, as per Hornwright employee agreement. So this post makes me think that Hornwright may have owned this Rockhound especially if the employees are employed by Hornwright. All right, leaving this terminal starts the quest Earth Mover. All we need to do now is craft the necessary ignition cores, which takes 20 nuclear waste, by the way. Nuclear waste is pretty rare, so you may have to head out to get some like me. I found enough at the Nuka-Cola bottling plant. Then we need to insert the cores into the drill, head back up to the control room, and hit the switch. This completes the quests and brings the previously dormant Rockhound to life. And we can get some great views of the massive bucket wheel stripping away the top of Mount Blair. Alright, that's all I have on the Rockhound and Mount Blair. I hope everybody enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Also consider following me on Twitter. It's the best place for me to keep in contact with you guys. But anyway, this has been Wijin TV. Thanks for watching, guys.